Hey everyone, Evan Nathaniel Grimm here. I'm going to talk about the Gemini New Moon happening May 30th. Uh, before I start off, uh, if you'd like a birth chart reading from me, the link is in the description box below. Also, please subscribe to my content to get more of my forecasts. I'm going to be doing a lot more in the near future. Uh, so, this New Moon in Gemini is actually the most productive lunar cycle of the entire year because it's highlighting the sign that Mars is going to be in for about seven months from August until next March. And Mars is really about our immediate energy and drive and things that we can really take action on and things we're motivated, but motivated by. So this new moon is actually very much your chance to initiate uh, a new project, uh, especially something communications related. Um, so, you know, first of all, look at where nine degrees of Gemini falls in your birth chart. So look at the house that it's in and that will show you which part of your life is being activated and enhanced right now. So if you have Gemini in your 11th house, then, you know, maybe this is the birth of a new social media project, like potentially a podcast. If it's in your seventh house, then maybe there's a lot more activity with business partners, uh, significant partners, romantic partners. Um, so anyways, just calibrate that and look at that throughout the session today. So Gemini as a sign is very personal. It deals with personal communication, uh, connecting different facts together, and it's ruled by the planet Mercury. And in this context, you know, Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo, but in the case of Gemini, it's more about just the interconnectivity of information in our society. It's like the busy everyday phone calls, commerce, trades, you know, um, but it can also deal with things like, you know, learning new subject matter. But in a general sense here, Gemini is very, it's just very busy. And Mercury in this, in this case also deals with very commonplace information, um, but it's, it's just very quick. And so the traits of Gemini, otherwise, I mean, Geminis are very good at improvising. They're very comfortable with ambiguity. And uh, they like to offer their opinions on a lot of things because they are basically just pushing out all the things that they're, that they're taking in throughout the day. It's an input kind of output model. And so they're constantly connecting the dots. And so for everybody right now, this new moon is highlighting that part of your life. Um, so, you know, in what, what, what really, you know, kind of piques your curiosity. So with this new moon, you know, and there's a Gemini new moon every year, but with this new moon in particular, you know, you, you actually want to follow something here that is going to be consistently motivating you throughout the Mars Gemini cycle. So Mars is going to be in Gemini from August until March. That's because it's going to be retrograding at a certain point there. And, um, you know, what I'm really seeing here is this new moon for you is really that precursor to that time investment and that energy investment into, again, pushing a communications related project, continuing to, uh, you know, dive deeper into a subject. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be just one thing, because again, Gemini very much dabbles and is a jack of all trades. Um, but again, like this new moon is really that signifier. Uh, so really pay attention to what is motivating you on this new moon. Um, you know, so, some of this might be, you know, you can kind of uh, prepare for it, obviously, by leaning into the things that interest you. But even so, just pay attention to how are you feeling that day? Um, because again, you're going to, um, it's going to kind of presage that Mars transit. Now, Gemini, you know, with this interconnectivity, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the information in our lives is seemingly missing, right? Like we know one thing, um, we know this one thing about astrology, but we need to find someone else who is an expert in, let's say, Hellenistic astrology. And we have another person who's an expert in numerology. Gemini is really good at like kind of bringing these different uh, ideas and fact bases together um, and, and connecting the dots. So my, my theme for this new moon is finding the missing link. That's what this new moon is all about. So like I said, what subject matter is interest, it does interest you? Um, and you know, what do you kind of feel motivated, uh, again, to, to kind of explore? You know, Virgo is a little bit more about refinement. You know, that's also ruled by Mercury. So this is a little bit more about kicking down that door um, and just trying to peek into what's inside. Uh, but, you know, a really productive way to use this new moon, again, is to find people who are going to be able to help you put the puzzle pieces together. They might have a different piece that you need. Because eventually, like I said, with Mars in the sign for so many months, it's like, 
you're going to really want to be able to um, share. I think you're going to be able to want to share some type of, um, you know, uh, knowledge that you have. Um, you know, the other thing about, uh, you know, Gemini is it's, it's kind of like the perspective of being a lifelong student, you know, being a lifelong learner. So, you know, again, this is really not about necessarily committing right now to this, uh, to again, one thing. It's just that you're opening the door. And as I described on TikTok, you're just watching these ideas. You're throwing information out, watching it bounce around the pinball machine. You know, that's kind of the energy of Gemini. Um, so kind of opening your mind right now. Um, it's also actually conjunct to the fixed star Aldebaran. And Aldebaran was uh, one of, is actually, a, it's in the bullseye, in the Taurus bullseye. Um, and in ancient times, 5,000-ish years ago, it was actually associated with the vernal equinox. So that was actually the point in the sky um, that the ancients uh, saw on like uh, what we would consider now Aries season. So anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning that because this fixed star is very important. It has the energy of Mars in it. So we're talking about Mars eventually transiting Gemini for seven months. This new moon happens to be on a very aggressive, kind of warlike uh, star. It has a lot of connotations around um, battle, and it's associated with the Crusades. Um, at, you know, so so there's almost uh, a little bit of an, it's it accenting this very the the sort of um, again de the debate side of Gemini, the the side of Gemini that's motivated to argue for a certain opinion here a certain maybe even potential potentially even like a belief system here but like generally i kind of see this as kicking off maybe a lot of debates and you know you see in like the u.s there's a lot of conversation right now going on about like how are we going to deal with all of these crises that are converging simultaneously and obviously this isn't just a u.s uh new moon other countries are going through a lot right now but if you think about uh, the u.s i kind of see this new moon as kicking off a discussion that's going to continue during that Mars Gemini transit of, you know, what like do our, um, you know, is our country sort of supporting, uh, you know, you know, the best society possible or other issues? You know, there is there legislation that we need to revisit, you know, all these things. There's the Mars Gemini transit is just going to activate all of that, that back and forth. And so pay attention to what happens on this new moon with like political discussions. Um, so. Uh, the other thing about this new moon is Mars and Venus are in their home signs, which is a great thing. Mars is in Aries right now. Uh, so there is, uh, again, a ton of drive, a ton of energy, as opposed to where it was before in Pisces. So people kind of feel a little bit more extroverted and risk-loving than before. Meanwhile, Venus is in Taurus, so people are kind of able to, uh, you know, enjoy the outdoors um, and also kind of... Um, you know, you even kind of think about their own value systems and financial resources because Taurus deals with that too. But Venus and Taurus is a very pleasant energy. Um, so, you know, people are just probably more, slightly more enjoyable to be around. At the same time, there's a Mars-Jupiter conjunction that's incredibly motivating as well. Um, and this is actually the, the birth or the kickstart of a, maybe a new, um, you know, adventure in your life. So that adventure could be travel related. Maybe you're taking a trip. Uh, maybe you're embarking on a new um, academic study, new academic path. You know, that's very much a Jupiterian thing. But in general, it's like we're expanding the scope, um, you know, of our, uh, of our purview. You know, we, we want to bring more of the world into our lives. So this could be kind of even tied to the Mars-Gemini transit and the, and the themes of Gemini, of picking up like, you know, again, little kind of pieces uh, here and there, finding other people to collaborate with, connect those missing dots. And then with Jupiter, it's like bringing us to an even higher place of actual wisdom and then eventually being able to share that with people. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting uh, moon where I, or I just think that with this moon, there's people just willing to throw their hat in the ring and say and offer information, offer their knowledge, like I said. Um, and so it's just creating this really interesting network effects, whereas earlier in the year we just had... Um, there, there was just this overwhelming amount of Pisces energy, which was keeping people kind of, uh, they were much more reflective and internalizing things. But now with this combination of Gem Gemini and Aries, um, you know, and keep in mind, again, Mars will be in Aries or Gemini for most of the year. I really see this as a, a you know, an energetic shift. The trajectory is totally different now. Um, and, um, you know, with also another theme there is that most of the signs on this new moon are personal signs. 
Whereas a lot of last year and into this year, most planets were in transpersonal signs like Aquarius and Pisces. So now that it's in these first three signs of the Zodiac, people are, um, again, interested in contributing to the conversation with their thoughts, their ideas, their perspectives. Um, so I just see this as like this new moon creating those network effects. It's that pinball machine bouncing ideas around. It's it's the butterfly effect. I mean, it's 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 a ripple effect. Like everyone has something to share here and they're sharing it. Maybe it's on Twitter. Maybe it's in a podcast. Maybe it's in, on social media. Maybe it's in a, at, a, at a local council. Gemini rules immediate environment. Um, and speaking of kind of local, thinking locally here, um, you know, I actually kind of think that this reflects a little bit, you know, the gas price issue, because, you know, as gas prices stay high, people are driving less and they're staying local. Gemini actually deals with neighbors, um, you know, in your local community. So I think during the Mars Gemini transit, this might be pre uh, kind of previewing that as well, because uh, I think a lot of people are going to invest a lot more in, uh, yeah, their, their local communities, because that's just where they can be right now. A lot of people don't want to drive that far away. Um, so, you know, just think about like, what do your neighbors have to offer you? Um, you know, you know, do they, I don't know, like, you know, it could be just things that they know, could be resources they have, but like really just think, um, make sure that your kind of your situation around you is, is covered. Um, but again, to go back to the Mars uh, Jupiter thing, uh, this is very much a, Im also embarking on a journey of personal discovery, self-discovery, um, stepping into your own confidence, believing and trusting that you have the tools um, to accomplish a lot of things on your own. So there's a lot of self-motivation here. And I think that plays well, it dovetails with the Gemini energy of saying, hey, I have a lot to offer. I have my own, I have wisdom. I have a perspective and, and let me throw it out there. So there is some type of conversation happening on multiple dimensions. Like I said, with your neighbors, with your friends, Gemini ruling things like just texting, emailing, just throwing a lot of feelers out. And then there's this other conversation happening with the collective. And then that is going to spark, like I said, these debates, which are, which are especially important right now in the U S because clearly there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of issues, like a lot of the, um, you know, there, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed. Um, and, and so the Saturn Mercury square is happening here as well. Saturn Mercury square is kind of, uh, this need that like, we feel this need to prove our knowledge as well. So Saturn is testing Mercury and saying, well, do you actually have the facts? You know, so as we start to debate things, we are very concerned with who is right and who is wrong, but in a very logical way. Um, like, you know, so, so that is introducing a lot of practicality. Um, but also this demand for commitment. So like you have all these ideas, but like, I want to see that I want to see results. So this is a very results driven aspect. And sometimes it feels very, um, you know, uh, almost, uh, pessimistic and closed off and defeated. That's what happens with the Saturn square sometimes. But, you know, in general there, I think that there's a, a, a realization of, again, like I have to actually commit. I have to commit to something here. Um, and if I'm going to commit to something long-term, I got to check the details and make sure that they're right. So I don't all, I don't really see that as a, a huge problem. You know, Mercury's retrograde in this case too, but like, you know, it's almost like we're doing a double take again and, and making sure that, um, you know, we, we, we got it right. And we're gonna find a lot of things that were, you know, that were off base. And so it's like, let's calibrate this, let's fix it. And, and that can apply to the laws too. Of realizing, you know, this law no longer serves like a more complicated society. Um, so that, that could play out. Um, you know, the other thing to keep in mind, there's an elemental shift away from water. There's really not a lot of water energy apart from that Neptune and Pisces, South Node and Scorpio. Um, so again, this is about driving results through, um, you know, I mean, like driving results, uh, but, but only after... Uh, finding the right people, finding the right people to complete those ideas for us, to build a plan with us. Um, so I, I would see a lot of like social media projects launching at this new moon. And this would be probably great for you to do that, to think about that. So um, again, you know, also if you're, if you're, you know, again, if you're curious to learn more about something, this is a good time to invest in that. 
Um, and then uh, the final thing here is that Mercury is returning to the 27th degree of Taurus after the, it, it stations direct in middle of June. Uh, so, you know, the 27th degree of Taurus is very important because that's where the lunar eclipse was last November. Um, and last November, uh, Biden got a colonoscopy. Kamala Harris was president, I don't know, for like an hour. Um, but uh, because Mercury is going to be returning back to that 27th degree of Taurus, it is possible that it's going to highlight something from that time. And it's going to be very information related. So th that's going to be exact around June 8th, 9th, maybe June 10th. But in that little time range, um, I, I wouldn't be shocked if there was some uh, health related information um, from that time uh, about Biden. So it could be just something related to that colonoscopy or related to his health. Um, so, you know, just look out for that. It's, it's totally possible. Um, but anyways, so just to kind of wrap this up, um, I really do think that the Gemini new moon, it feels pretty good. Apart from that Mercury retrograde in, with the Saturn square, um, overall, this is a lot of uh, active, outward, easy flowing energy. Um, and it's really when people are starting to um, kind of wake up to how much they still need to learn <clears throat> and, and wanting to reconnect with a lot of people. Um, and not just people from the past, but just, you know, they want to start new conversations. They're kind of sick of the, you know, the narratives that have been playing out over the last few years. Um, you know, all we've been hearing about is, um, well, for, for the, uh, you know, it kind of started to winnow away a little bit. But like what we've been hearing about for the last two and a half years is about the pandemic and the, da the dangers of that. And, um, you know, I, I think at this point, people are ready to kind of shift their focus into something else. Um, and with gas prices being so high, like I said, I think a lot of people are trying to start conversations with the, with, with, with the, with the folks around them, um, and saying like, are you seeing what I'm, what I'm seeing? Um, are we, you know, still, um, you know, and maybe even still feeling locked down. That's something to keep in mind too, by the way, Saturn is still in Aquarius until next spring. And so that's why we're kind of like still, um, you know, feeling a little confined even though uh, very few places have any kind of rules around, um, you know, the situation anymore. So uh, that is an interesting juxtaposition as well. So like, I think a lot of people still feel locked down. Um, and, and this Gemini energy though, is sending out little bursts of information now of like saying, well, you know, uh, finally sharing that, that the cer certain like information with people around us of like, again, are, does this check? Does this idea check out to you? Um, do I have this right? Um, and then again, like even debating within your local community, because we're seeing all this, uh, all, you know, all these horrendous things in the news that make us realize, wow, we need to revisit a lot of things uh, about our society and what do we value and what do we, you know, how do we want to keep people safe and protected? And so there's a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of debates that are going to spark across local communities. Again, Gemini is local. And a lot of that's going to be documented on social media and online. But like, there's a lot of disagreement coming out here. So um, anyways, hope you enjoyed this, this brief session. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna be doing a lot more YouTube videos um, in the future. Also, I just launched a podcast, the Inner Worlds Astrology Podcast. Uh, you can check it out on a number of platforms. Um, so anyways, have a good evening, afternoon, wherever you are.